So clearly, China is uh, having a lot of difficult times uh, from a macro perspective. Um, it, it, it historically grew on the back of its real estate sector and the export market. That That is uh, no longer the case, and it's uh, facing a lot of difficulties. In addition, investors are broadly negative, but this does set us up for the possibility to find attractive opportunities. I would say exporters, high dividend yielders, and market share gainers are possible areas to look for. Uh, as you know, China, uh, the government has uh, been um, putting in place this nine-point plan to improve governance and uh, increasing dividend yields could have a big impact, especially when valuations are low to begin with. What about the e-commerce and the China internet names? Uh, how much of a compelling valuation opportunity is there for longer-term investors and patient capital, Sammy, if the secular trends associated with the Chinese consumer in the longer term are still intact? I think the e-commerce sector could be interesting in the sense that um, a lot of the companies are starting to give money back to shareholders. So to the extent that they are buying back shares, that could be interesting. I think on an adjacent level, uh, um, the gaming companies, for example, could also be interesting. Um, revenues are rising. And again, buyback activity is increasing. The broad setup here is that um, the, the economy isn't growing rapidly anymore. So the companies that deploy capital or return capital more effectively will be rewarded. And, and that's going to be very different from the last decade or two. Sami, can we stress test uh, the case for uh, the Taiwan tech names in an environment where we are seeing a broad rationalization uh, amongst the big AI names, not least of all uh, NVIDIA and uh, the semiconductor names. And then, of course, uh, the geopolitics are not going anywhere anytime soon and could even worsen uh, post November the 5th in the US election, depending on the outcome. Yes, yeah, so I think if we step back and think about it, at the end of 2022, uh, we realized that you know we have this thing called ChatGPT and AI is going to revolutionize the world. So the spending has been shifting from software to hardware. Uh, in a sense, we're substituting labor with capital. And what that means is that a large part of the EM players who play in the uh, hardware side are beneficiaries. Places like Taiwan and Korea have uh, the leading manufacturers of, of many enablers of AI. So I think that's still going to be the case. Um, you know, when you look at these infrastructure build outs, typically it takes three, four, five, six years to fully build out. And we're still sort of in the first half of this. Clearly, um, beating expectations will be harder now that expectations are higher compared to even a year ago. But um, I I'm still positive over the next two to three years.